Hello YouTube, uh, in this tutorial I want to share my personal techniques for animation using Clip Studio. For this I'm going to use this shot of a sketch I create. Uh, if you want to watch the entire sketch you can go to my YouTube channel or check in the, in the video description. I'm going to put a link to the sketch. Uh, a disclaimer, I am not a professional animator, I am trying to learn and I really enjoy uh, using Clip Studio for animation. Uh, I develop these techniques because um, I find it easy to follow and I am quite a lazy person so these are like the, the easy ways for me to achieve this kind of uh, animation. And this uh, tutorial is going to be divided in different uh, parts. Uh, the first one is the mistakes I make in this, this uh, sketch. Uh, I want to teach you my animation techniques, like uh, the use of 3D characters and how I approach the animation and the use of audio with Clip Studio, how to make the lip sync and how to make the special effects. So let's start. Well, let's talk about the mistakes I make. So when I start the animation, I was exciting to do this sketch so I start immediately I didn't think too much I use a character a standard character for this animation I'm going to show you and I use this kind of character this is the standard uh, 3d figure from clip studio Clip Studio has different shapes, like this one is the the one who looks like like a manga character. I don't like it. This is not my style, so I use the the old one, the one who is uh, more anatomically correct. But when I start the animation, uh, I didn't change. I didn't change the the presets of uh, this character you can you can adjust the body shape of the 3d figure um, with different characteristics so you can change uh, the shape of the head the shape of the shoulders um, everything so it's quite customizable and <laughs> i didn't do anything special with this character i just start placing the character and put it in the position and I when I when I create my my, my character when I create like the the, the, the the character who who was going to to appear I realized that the, the proportions were wrong the proportions didn't match almost anything so uh, the second mistake is that the models are really good reference and it helps you to keep the consistency of the proportions and um, the volumes are consistent all over uh, the sketch or, or, or your shot but I don't know they look stiff all the time so my advice is not to use this like I use it because I trace over the characters and I didn't change the final pose to a strong one and because of that the final animation is not so fluid it's not so well done another mistake I made was that I um, I trust too much in the onion in the onion skin I use it for the in-betweening. I use the, the the light table too and the onion skin for in-betweening but it's not the best way to create the in-betweenings because when you create lines 
uh, that are in the middle or between two other lines. Uh, it looks like it worked, but when you play the animation, this line will start jumping around and they are not going to look smooth. So if you want smooth animation, it's better if you go uh, between the um, uh, these uh, drawings you can use F9 to go forward and F7 to go backwards so it's a really good way to check if the lines are like in the right position so this is my advice don't trust too much in the onion skin maybe use the flipping of the drawings to to make a smoother animation these are the three mistakes i made doing this animation i want to talk about uh, a template i create for my animations so this is based in an a3 sheet of paper it has the holes for the pegs obviously it's just a drawing but it, it it's in the right scale this blue area is the camera so this is the one recording at HD um, you can use your logo this um, Layers are draft layers, so they are not going to be print or they are not going to be rendered. I create guidelines too. You can take it out or use it if you want. And I want to teach you how to use this template. So, first of all, I am going to share these files. This and this file. This is for A3 and for 4 for 4K uh, video. And this is A3. Uh, is for HD HD video. Uh, so these files. Mm, the idea is not to use these two files, but use it for the template. To create the template, you just uh, Open the file and uh, register material template. So this template you can use the name you want. So you can place HD video for this one and save it. Uh, whatever you can you can place it in my templates. And when you create a new, a new uh, fa animation file, these are the presets uh, that you need to use for this. So, because you save that, you can uh, try to find it here. Mm, all these HD HD video. Uh, this is going to use this uh, this template as a reference. So check this because this is kind of important. This is the actual resolution, uh, 1920 for 1080. This is the safe area. This is inside of the recording area of the HD area. This is for, for safety, for placing things that are not going to be cropped. This is the, the area for scanning. So this area here, the one who says scan. These are the resolution. And this is the blank space. So this is this space from here to here, from here to here, from here to here. This is the story name, so it's good if you if you 
use it so just write the name you want uh, you can uh, create like automatically a sequence like if you want your scene and your shot in your name so this will place it like scene 001 and shot 0001 uh, if you want to use this one it's quite good because you can manage your entire short or your entire film in just one folder and you can preview uh, the you can preview the um, all the shots in a manager they have uh, I'm going to show you that right now uh, this is the name of the timeline you can put whatever you want there this is the frame rate and this is how many frames your shot are going to have I never change it I change it afterwards so uh, this set the name of the timeline automatically you can take it out if you want and this is your actual template uh, I have the presets for mine here so this is my presets for HD when you do OK it creates this automatically I always change the color of the of the paper because uh, I think it's, it's too much to watch a white screen for hours so I always tint this uh, paper to a kind of gray I like, I like it because it's not too strong for my eyes and I can work better for a long time so let's check the presets for for the 4K template so this is the resolution these are the safe area 10% this is the overflow is 10% of overflow too and this is the blank space this keep the proportions to A3 and when you create it this is the way it appears I'm going to share these two files uh, you can uh, check in the description and it's going to be linked to a tip of the month uh, for Clip Studio in this tip the, there is more information about my technique in audio especially and it's going to be the, the link for the files to download uh, these templates or these files for using like templates now uh, I want to explain my process for making this animation I use 3d models to do it you can check my 3d models here so it's quite easy to find where everything is in the space using 3D models because they are truly in 3D. <laughs> so, um, for example, these are the. You can check the 3D models here, and you can see this is the passing position. Uh, to, using that, you can know for sure how much movement the character is going to have and the good thing about this is that you can really place your character in the 3D scene so you can check that if I paste this model in in this layer the layer of the other model you can see that they are perfectly placed to follow the movement okay so using these models as a reference 
I trace the lines of these uh, models. Uh, you can you can do that in. In, with this option, this create a like a 2D drawing base in a 3D character. So this is my drawing. I use these techniques. I create a preset, uh, changing some of the so, some of the. Um, uh, options for this so I create this uh, auto action and when I do it it create this this kind of result you see so mm, let's check how this looks like I use this technique for my key positions so the star and every step these are my key positions this tell the story of this shot he start here he go three steps he turn he look he surprise whatever uh, this is my first mistake. I never changed this to a better pose. Uh, I could um, modify these uh, these poses to a stronger one, but I didn't do that. So I use this exactly as a reference, and I did the in betweens for everything. So this is the the part they stop this is the part when he stops he turn around looks is surprised and then is angry uh, that that's it that the the actual the raw animation the, the the basic animation basing this animation i start creating the clothes and the nose, the nose, especially for the turnaround, I create like the 3D shape because it was hard to do this part. So this is my rough animation. Okay, you can see it turn, look, say no, go to the front. Okay, you can check here that I didn't follow the actual reference. In the reference, the character looked down and says no, but I, I didn't feel it looked alright, so I changed that. So this is uh, the character with all the lines. Uh, in this part, I create my dialogue. I'm going to show the dialogue. And I'm going to explain later how I did that. But I place my dialogue using um, the labels from Clip Studio. It's in animation, mm, label. Uh, I think this is, I think it's track label, this one, yeah, track label. So, when I create this animation, I place over another one, making the lip sync. You can check here, I'm going to change this maybe, strong color. I create the anticipation of the mouth, uh, the actual words, and I wrote the words here. The, the dialogue is, oh, no, 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 you are eating the car. So I place the dialogue in every part.
Yep. So I have the animation with the face like if you check here there is no expression just the placement of the head and the placement of all the, the face features and then I create this other layer and I place like the actual expression and the mouth shapes when I finish this I create my line art and then the colors for the character and it's quite easy to do the coloring I'm going to show you I'm going to erase the colors of this character and because the line art is a reference I can do the colors quite easily. I use this bucket. These are my presets for the bucket. Is for um, it refer uh, use the reference layer. I have active close gap. Uh, yeah, that's like all the all the presets for this uh, field too so let's check how much time it take me to do this uh, this is a problem so when this happen I use a tool uh, a, pe a pen and I close the, the gap I close here and then I can feel the rest. You can see it's quite fast and it's super precise there is no holes or anything because my line art is back ve is vector layers so there's no holes there is no problems I'm going to teach you in another video my techniques for coloring but this is a good one so this is the actual drawing and I create a background for this and the background is animated too if you check the background uh, there is fog in the background and you can see it moves and this is this layer um, is the layer of the fog I think it's this one. Yep, it's this one. So I create this animation with this uh, keyframe animation option. And when it start moving, the, this layer start moving too. And these are the techniques I use. Now I want. Uh, I'm going to talk about the audio part for this and um, for this shot now for the lip sync and the sound effects uh, I want to have steps for the character did this make the character looks more real uh, more in the real world so I find 
some sounds for steps, but I didn't know where, I didn't know where to place it. So what I did was that I knew that the step will happen one frame before, one, mm, two frames before the, the actual step. I knew, I knew where to place the steps in the timeline, but I didn't knew where these steps are in time. So what I did was a simple calculation. I know that 24 frames is one second. So I divide one in 24 and this is the time for every frame. So because I knew the steps happen in this specific area, in this specific frame, the, the thing I did was multiply the number of frames for the time for each frame. And this gave me the exact time where every step happened. So the only thing I need to do is find this specific time, 0 0.38. And if you check here, 0 0.38, oh, almost there. This is my first step, then my second step, then my third step, then stops. There is a sound effect here, and then the audio. And this way I knew that every step will happen. Synchronize the animation and the audio. But what about the lip sync? Well, the lip sync is almost the same. I knew where everything happened here. So I just check where every word starts. So I check here it says oh no. So what I did was I took the time and I used this time for every word. So this time is for the frame 96. What I did was I simply multiplied the time for 24. So one second is 24. That means that I just need to multiply my time for 24 frames and this gave me the exact position for every phrase. So you can check here. Oh no, no. So oh no, no, no. I knew that everything happened in exact frame. So when you go to clip, I knew when 93 was O, 99 was no, 105 was no, 117 is no, and so forth. So this way I knew where every word will start and end. And I just mark every part with this uh, create label. It's quite easy. It's in animation, label, create track label. You, uh, you uh, write whatever you need. For example, no. And how many frames it will take. Let's put five. So this way is it plays the word. And you can use this as a reference. And if you don't like where it is, you can erase it. Let's do it again. In animation, label, delete track label. I have everything in the quick access because it's easier for me. So this way I knew that every word will happen. 
Yes, at the moment I need to. You are eating the car. Yeah. And that's how I synchronize my lip sync with the audio, my special effects audios with my animation. It's quite simple. Another option for lip sync is Papagayo. Just write whatever you need. Place everything in the spot you need. And that's a way of making lip sync. I like this way, it's simple for me. I need to use this software because of the special effects. So it wasn't a big deal to do. So that's it. Thank you for watching. And if you have any question, please let me know. I'm going to continue with tutorials about this sketch. Remember, if you want to watch this sketch, you can check in the link below. Thank you. Bye.